Hi YouTube, welcome back to WTFRC Cars. So, a bit of a break from Fly Sky Vids. We've got the Demond 50kg servo that I did a uh, sort of stress test on and everything. And I'm going to put this in the uh, Creighton 6S EXB and see how it performs. The servo we've got in there, I did originally, I'm pretty sure I had a 50kg Demond in it before they went brushless. Um, and that worked really well, but I've now got that in one of me. I'm not sure if it's in the XT8, XT8E X ray car, but the servo we've got in there, it's meant to be quite powerful, but I think it were only about 35 kg and it just doesn't seem quick enough and strong enough. So let's try the uh, Demond brushless in it. Certainly tested to be powerful enough. Be interesting to see what it's like in quite a quick basher, but bring you in for a close-up look, show you how we get on with it, and uh, see what the results are. So we got us Creighton 6S EXB. It's had quite a lot of mods done to this. We got all the Vitavon hubs, um, Vitavon diffs. Um, so I think it is Vitavon 7075 hubs front and rear, um, bulkheads front and rear, all three diffs of Vitavon. Did the mod to stop the drive shafts falling out? Cos Armour don't know how long to make drive shafts apparently. But uh, yeah, the servo we've got in here at the minute. Uh, it looks like it's the Rockstar. So first thing I'm going to need to do is get into the receiver box. And then get the screws out for the actual servo. So... If I remember rightly on this, I think it's the 2mm hex we need. Yeah, so 2mm hex will do the servo box. And 2mm hex will do the servo. So I'll get the servo arm off as well. I think that's a 2.5mm, if I remember rightly on this one. And I think also on this we upgraded the servo saver. Because the stock one's a bit sloppy. And with this being one of the original uh, EXBs, the actual servo arm that came on this one is a 25 spline one. So I'll get the screws out the receiver box, I'll get the screws out the servo, and then we can carry on. So I'll do my best to get this sort of in shot and on camera, but you've got your four screws around your servo. Then you want to take your cover off your receiver box. And even if you change your receiver and everything like I have, it's going to be channel 1 for your steering. So we just need to fish the actual cable out. And if anybody's curious what the switch is, um, basically I wired a switch up so I can put the receiver into bind or update mode without opening the receiver box. Because it's a bit of a pain on these cars. You've got really long screws and if you're like me and you've got multiple radios and you're constantly swapping and changing them, it can be a right pain. So all we've got to do now, once you've got your servo cable unplugged, is get your servo out of the actual mount. Now you should just be able to take it out with the four screws on the servo. If you're struggling to get it out, you can remove the four screws that hold the actual servo mount in and get it out that way but literally it just lifts out so i'm going to get that out and uh, then we'll have a look see how the new servo is going to fit so see if this makes it any easy to see but that's the servo out um for this one i've dropped the full plate out because it would just as easy these servos are very tight fit in it but once the servo's removed and i mean this is not a bad servo it's advertised as 46 kg, but I don't think it's quite that. <laughs> but it weren't a bad one. So, now we've got to fit our Demon servo. This Demon servo is definitely not going to fit in that easily. But we can give us a little bit more wiggle room. If we drop the bottom of the servo off. And this is just a weirdness with the uh, armor cars. You can just file the bracket, which a lot of guys end up doing. So 
So now we've got alt servo out, we've got as bracket. What I would do is remove the bottom of the demand servo, because if you don't, it's an absolute nightmare to try and get this in. If you just remove the base of it, it's still a little tight, but you can get it on. Without the base, well, sorry, without removing the base, it's a bit of a pain. And to be honest, this is not a reflection in any way on the sizing of the demand servo because i've pretty much had this issue with most servos it's just a weirdness with the armor bracket and when you come to put the bottom on it's rounded at one end and sort of flat sided at the other make sure you get your little o-ring in the correct place and then we just need to tighten down these screws don't go crazy tight with these because they are just tiny screws and tiny threads and all they for is to keep the o-ring nice and tight so once we've got that in place we need to one root our cable and two fasten down the servo now these are quite high top servos so i think the only thing we need on these is just the standard screws so you're going to want one of your little plates a washer and a screw on either side and we'll get exactly the same on the opposite side so i'm just going to get all four of them tightened down so once we've got it screwed back on don't forget this plate goes on with the tapered bits towards this side and you want your servo on towards this side now on a lot of RCs you have to put the servo arm on now so I'd say get this connected and make sure it's centered but on this it's really easy to get to it. All you've got to do is thread the wire through and you've got to get it under the actual center shaft so just make sure wherever you're rooting it it can't then get caught up in the center drive shaft because it will chew through a servo cable pretty damn quick. But I shall get this threaded through and then see what else we've got. Now one thing to be aware of is when you fasten this plate down you don't ideally want your servo to be bottoming out on chassis. So the easiest way to find out if you need to uh, space your servo is get these four screws started and then you can loosen the servo screws off see if your servo lifts up if it does you're probably going to be better off shimming it just to lift it slightly off the chassis of the rc it does stop some of the slaps and bangs when you slam down on chassis coming through your servo so i'll get the four screws sort of tightened down then i'll loosen these off see if i can show you what i mean so if we loosen the four servo screws off so you can easily lift the servo up and then you tighten down your four screws that hold the servo mount on just try and get it on as square as you can because the mount does have to locate on the actual posts or the little plastic insert does should i say and it's a good time to make sure that your servo wire is not trapped underneath your servo and then as you tighten these down you'll see the servo lift up and that'll give you a good indication of the size of shims that you're going to have to put underneath the servo so you will have a gap at the side of your servo you can tell when it's sat down so you just want to tech up that gap with shims just so your servo's not screwed and forcing onto the bottom of your chassis so the original one I had a couple of these shims these are number two let's see if they go yeah, I think we're gonna need a little bit more than that so I'll use the uh, little shim on the top I'll drop that to the bottom as well as one of these on either side so let's get that stuck on so that is the Demon servo pretty good match foot color it's a really solid fit so all we've got to do now is route our cables through 
into his receiver box, making sure we don't have anything catching on the drive shaft. As I say, if it does catch, it will chew through that cable in a very short amount of time. So we just need to get the wire routed properly and then plug back into channel one. And it's well out of where is drive shaft. And if anybody's wondering what the switch is for, I'll show you in a minute. Because that switch saves me a lot of stress and a lot of messing around. So I'll get the four screws fastened down on receiver box and uh, then we can go on about setting the servo up. Right, so that's all as receiver box. And the reason I've got this switch is because I uh, leave it in middle and this receiver requires a bind plug to bind. So if I switch it one way, it puts it in bind mode. Middle is off and forward is uh, update mode. I think that's the way around it is, but we'll soon see. So I'll grab some batteries. We'll get this powered up and center our steering servo. So we've got his batteries connected. Let's power up his Welcome transmitter. Let's see if I've got a model memory set up for this. Yep. Yeah. So we'll switch it to the EXB. Uh, make sure his channel number definitions are right on four. Radio frequency, yep, that's right. Go to his RX menu. Uh, as an interface, that's right. So we can go bind, classic, start bind. Then I need to remember which way round it is for bind. So I'm guessing it's not forward. So rear position is bind. What I'm going to do is flick it all the way forward and put it in update mode. So then we can go update. It's an FGR4 that's in it. So this is just updating the actual receiver. Because this is the brand new MB4 Plus. And that receiver's not been used for a while. So we can power it off once it's updated. Switch the switch all the way back. Turn it on, set it to bind. So we're fully bound. Now, what I need to do is go into a sub trim. And I need to zero this out because it's from the old servo so we'll have that zeroed out go to endpoints I'll set them back to 100 we'll definitely be uh, or almost definitely be dropping them down but if we start off with them at 100 and we know we've got a servo centered now so we can power off the RC, Shutting down. power off as transmitter for the moment, and we need to get us on in place. So if we try and get the wheels as central as possible, so it looks like that's the position that we're going to need our servo arm on. we can get that screwed in so let's power his transmitter back up welcome to no plus so power his receiver back up and we've got external voltage monitor on this one which is this thing and that will monitor the whole lipo pack voltage so That's definitely more lively. <laughs> that's uh, that's more like the performance that I was after. So definitely, 
definitely going to be a good fit to this RC. That's nice and lively. So if we just set as endpoints, I can just see it pulling ever so slightly on the servo saver. So I want to back that off. I want the full amount of travel, but I don't want it struggling. Because ultimately, all you're going to do is put extra load on your servo, make it red hot, and put stress on your servo saver. But yeah. If I put some weight on it, that servo is going to be a cracking fit for the uh, crate and success. So, I suppose the only thing to do is get the batteries fully charged and uh, let's take this out for a blast. See how the Demon servo holds up.
Well, there's nothing stuck on the steering but the demand servo. It's like shit, it's gears off straight away. Um, if we look at the RC, it's slid upside down a few times and it's got a bit of gravel on it, but nothing's broke. It's not had any real hard tumbles. It has got the servo saver on it. So I'm sure this is gonna come to no surprise to anyone, but didn't even last one pack of batteries. I think we'd got about five minutes of runtime altogether, but So the servo gears shot completely. So if I power that off, you can hear it. So hopefully you'll be able to see from the uh, actual video footage, there were no crazy high jumps or anything. And that BMX track, it's not a skate park, you're not jumping 20, 30 foot in air. You can see from the uh, actual body shell, there's no damage. All we've got is a few scuff marks from stones, and s some of them were already on it. Um, if you look underneath, you can just see a few scuff marks where we've been landing. And again, this wasn't brand new when I took it out. So, no damage to the actual Creighton. The uh, Creighton, if you've seen any of me build on it, it's built like a tank, this thing. But, a 50 kilogram servo, I mean, the one we took out was advertised as 46, and that's a rock star. And that one's not broken. Um... Anybody that's not seen the video when I fitted this, I've shimmed the actual servo up so it's not sat on the solid chassis. So when we're landing, it's not transferring the bumps straight to the servo. But yeah, I'll uh, go through the lovely task of stripping all the uh, receiver box down and everything. Get this servo out. Get the uh, Raystar servo put back in. And then we'll do a bit of a post-mortem on the Demon servo. And uh, I don't think anybody that's owned one of these Demon is going to be surprised at what we find. But I think it'll be the gears sheared off it. It's usually the case for them. So unfortunately, they have sorted out the marketing issue. Where they were saying brush, uh, brushed servos or callers. Um, they were advertising them as brushless, at least now it's brushless, but unfortunately the uh, it looks like the gears are far weaker, because I have run the 50 kilogram brushed or callous ones that they uh, sold. I've run them in quite a few at bashers, I've not had any issues with the gears. But this, um, like I show in video, you can see where it lands, it's just a nice flat landing. And then all of a sudden I've got no gear, no steering and it just rolls off at next two bumps and then I have to go and fetch it. But I'll drop the servo out and uh, yeah, we'll do a postmark on it and see what's dead. Right, so the servo is pretty much dead. I've checked the servo arm and that seems absolutely fine. So... Let's see if it's salvageable in any way, or if we can see what's failed. Um, as you can see, the bottom of it completely unmarked. There's no scratches. It was off the base of the RC, off the chassis. That's why I put the shims on the servo bracket. So, can we see what gears have sheared? Well, his main drive gears look fine, there's plenty of grease on them. Uh, 
and we don't have anything missing from that gear. And it doesn't look like that gear is sheared. So, is it as actual motor output? Well, it looks like that can still drive. I'm wondering if one of the gears lifted. But I can't get that gear up till I get that bearing off. And that bearing don't want to move. Well, we're getting somewhere. So the bearing looks fully intact. But the motor drive head is quite far down so I'm wondering if it slipped off the edge and that's why it can't drive because the actual gears look fine but from what I can tell it's spinning fine feeling anything broken on that one either potentiometer feels fine definitely a strange one wondering if the screws slightly come on come loose on it because they didn't feel very tight but definitely hard to tell why that were just spinning but if you try and go crazy tight with these it'll definitely uh, strip the threads nice and easy to work on though just slightly confused as to why it completely stopped moving. I did initially think maybe the servo arm had sheared off, but let's get a receiver. And we're going to need a bind plug. So, Let's see if we can find out what's actually wrong with it. So we'll set that binding. Uh, let's grab a transmitter. Welcome to Noble. Set it on one that we're not using. Channel definitions four, that's right. So we got it bound. And strangely, it's back to working. So let's see if we can put some load on it. Yep. So we can put load on it. Hmm. The plot thickens. Only thing I can think is let's get it back in RC and uh, see how it does. Well, we're now all back together. Um, everything's powered on. Servo's working fine, even under load. 
even if I hold the wheels to the point where just the servo saver is moving. But, yep, who knows? I didn't find any teeth sheared off it. And that's fully back up to working. It's the same servo arm, it's screwed on the same. Um, but as you saw when I first started it, by moving wheels, it had let the servo get to the position it were on, so the servo arm must have been turning the top. Who knows? The uh, jaw is definitely out on this one. So I didn't find any gears sheared off as to whether the top screws had come loose and let it lift up so it wasn't driving. The motor gears do look very low on the actual drive out from the motor to the first reduction gear but it's working fine and as you see I don't have the servo saver crazy tight so it's not transferring a lot of, dam lot of damaging force to the actual servo itself not sure um, yeah but it's back in it works again and I didn't have to buy any parts for it so yeah who knows? I know people are going to say the gears might not be lined up to where they were sheared off because they don't make a full revolution. But I have gone around checking them. I can't find any missing teeth. There's no debris anywhere at all in it. So yeah, short of these screws not being tightened down and it letting it separate, really the only thing I can think of. But the performance of it is cracking <laughs> but hmm, yeah strange one when I didn't find any sheared gears I did double and triple check the arm because I thought maybe the arm's gone but the fact that I could turn the wheels that moved the arm and stop the servo hunting for a position yeah definitely a strange one but let's wrap this one up so there you have it it is back up and working I can't tell you why it stopped working, but you did see the server were just hunting for position and not moving. The only thing I can think, the top screws were really loose, so if it's let the top at servo lift and it's separated the gears, but there's no debris whatsoever, nothing at all, not even a tiny little filing, and I've screwed it back together tight, it works, I can put it under load, I can hold the servo, which if you want to try holding a 50 kg servo, because that's running at 8.4 volts, so it will be hitting 50 kg. It takes some force. And it still works. So, yeah. Not a bad price servo. Not bad speed. Entirely up to you if you want to take your chance risking on it. I mean, I've put it back in the Creighton, and I'm just going to see how it goes. If it does fail again, I will let you know. But... At the minute, I can't get it to fail. I've tried putting the gears in different positions, wondering if it's sheared it. Nope. I <laughs> can't tell you why it stopped driving. But, as I said, no debris, which is making me think the top went on quite right, and it let the gears separate. But, yep, yeah, I'll just show you them as I find them. The one thing I can say is the specs are right on it. It is brushless. And when it works, it's fantastic. And when it breaks, apparently you just take it to bits, put it back together, and there's no wrong with it, and it carries on working. But, yeah, the jury's out on that one. Maybe worth taking a chance on it for the price. Just bear in mind, they are a cheap servo. So, not sure whether you're going to get the life out of it that you would out of an AGFRC or one at Reefs or SRT, Savox, Yantris, something like that. But if you've got any experience with these, comment below. But thanks again for watching WTFRC Cars. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Share to friends and family. And uh, catch you guys again in the next one. Guess what? Another dragon! <laughs>